Why has why has Florida turned such red pill? You mean <laughs> okay, red pill is different from a state going red. Uh, um, so Kaz Lopez say, why has Florida turned such red pill conservative state on steroids? I mean, it was for most of its time in recent history a swing state. Yeah, it was. You're right, and it turned red. Red pill and go, a state going red are two different things, but okay. Um, but let me see. Let's answer this question. Okay, let's look at this together. I don't know the answer to this, so I have to look it up. Is red the new purple? Why Florida is now a red state? The Sunshine State is in in the grips of the GOP and is bleeding red for the first time. For the first time in modern history, as of January two, uh, uh, 2022, there are more active registered Republican voters in the state of Florida than there are Democrat voters. Flashback just a few uh, short years ago. I know what's happening. Just tell me why. If uh, Okay, well. Recent presidential election claiming Florida as a key potential swing state. Recent trends, however, suggest this uncertainly. Okay, so you spent three paragraphs telling me I'm I'm here to know why, but you're telling me it's turned red in three paragraphs. Okay, Florida is currently the, the in the what the sin. What is this? What is this word? What is this word? Decennial. Decennial process, dissenting. Okay. Oh no, I don't know. Decennial lasting for or relating to a period of ten years. Oh, in a decennial process of redrawing their electoral map, according to the. Okay, can you tell us why? It's not going to tell us why. The Great Migration. Oh, there we go. In addition to redistricting. An increasingly aging electorate further points to further points to Republican learning status quo. The influx of older retired. Okay, so here's the here are the reasons. Okay, so the because Florida is a place where older retirees are going moving into. So it's a demographic change, a demographic that overwhelmingly leans right has accordingly challenged the electoral capital. Okay, so it's redistricting. But that's mostly that that doesn't change the demographic increasingly. Okay, so the the population is aging, uh, and old people are moving in. There's your answer. Number of young voters, and uh, has accordingly challenged the electoral capital of increasingly numbers of young voters and voters of color in Florida. Okay, so it's old people moving in. But so there, there is something that makes it more blue. Something there are things that are making it more blue. Things that are making it more red. Okay, so the racial demographic are changing, uh, but old people are moving in. Old people are more right wing. The more the more, more racial diversity is making it more blue. But one is more powerful than the other. I've, it says half of the population of Florida is composed of people of color. So that half should make it more liberal. Okay, so unfortunately for Democrats, the answer seems no. Well, while partisan tendencies among racial minorities show that a majority of Latino Floridans indeed vote Democrat, they do so far behind the national average. Oh, and these numbers are only decreasing. During the 2020 campaign season, the Biden campaign uh, staved, 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 staved off a myriad of false socialism labels for the Trump campaign. From the Trump campaign, okay. So the Latinos apparently are not as um, so. Florida's uh, racial diversity comes from Latinos, and I think the Latinos are becoming more right, uh, right leaning than other racial minorities. So they're not reliable for Democrats, or like over the uh, okay. At this portion of eighty percent of Latinos, yeah. So if you t if you tell the if you tell the Latinos that uh, Biden is socialist, 
the Latinos, because of their ex experience with Cuba and Venezuela, they're going to be like, oh, no, let's go, let's become Republicans, okay? So the Latinos that are in the United States, they are very allergic to anything that could be, smells like socialism. So unlike other, you know, racial minorities, they're not as reliable for Democrats. So the racial diversity of Florida doesn't seem to be enough to make it blue. And the, the older population moving there are making it red. Does that make sense? Let me see what you guys are saying. PK saying, it's not Latinos, it's Cubans. They hate socialism. Yeah, they hate, so well, not Cubans. Uh, Cubans in America, they hate socialism. Not all Cubans hate so socialism, but the ones that are in America, they hate socialism. Not all of them, again, let's not be collectivist, with, with a passion, right? And Bobby's saying it has nothing to do with their ethnicity. They fled socialist countries and Democrats pander to Marxists. Democrats do not pander. Okay, first of all, that's a lie. Okay. Um, Democrats are capitalists. Oh, okay. So they pan, they might pander to Marxists sometimes, not all of them. Some of them do. But, uh, but Democrats are, Democrats are more capitalist than Republicans. Okay. Um, Republicans claim they're capitalists, but they violate capitalism more than the Democrats do. Uh, Republicans are protectionists. That's anti-capitalist. Uh, Republicans spend more on government, you, than, and especially on military, than Democrats. That's anti-capitalist. And the Republicans um, very much are into lobby groups like the NRA and a whole bunch of oil industry and a whole bunch of other lobbying. They get um, so they, the line between uh, free the market and government is more blurry with a lot of Republicans. So Republicans claim to be capitalists, but I think on average the Democrats are more capitalists than the Republicans. Um, but anyways, I didn't say it's because of their ethnicity. They just happen to be identified by their ethnicity because um, you know that's how they're identified as. Like nobody when when we say Latinos in Florida they don't hate socialism. Okay. Nobody is just saying that it's because they're Latinos, okay? It's like, okay, they, obviously it's because they come from Cuba and they left Cuba because they are they were fleeing a socialist country and that's why they hate it. Like, it's not like, oh, my DNA is making me, my DNA is making me allergic to socialism. Nobody is suggesting it's because of their ethnicity, right? Um, Ibn Kaim is saying the majority of Latinos in Florida are Cuban, of Cuban descent. Yeah, that's what I said where most Latinos in the rest of the U.S. are Mexican. That's the reason for the disparity. That makes sense, right? So the Latinos in Florida are Cubans, and Cubans who have let, fled Cuba, they're like, no socialism here, please. But again, as our article said, the reason why they might like go run away from Democrats is because they falsely, falsely through propaganda, think that the Democrats are socialists. The Democrats are not socialists. Um, Republicans are more pro-business rather than capitalist. Yeah, because capitalist is not pro-business. Capitalist is like, I mean, pro-business, pro, okay, so, it, okay, so it, you have to be more, more clear, okay? Favoritism for businesses is wrong. It's anti-capitalist. You can be pro-business, but no pro-favoritism towards businesses, okay? Because if you are, that's anti-capitalist, okay? So you want business, so capitalism as a whole makes businesses be more successful, but not if you pick certain businesses over others or if you are if you have favors, right? Um, because capitalism is the biggest enemy of some businesses. Capitalism breaks monopolies. Capitalism puts businesses in direct competition with each other, right? Capitalism makes a whole bunch of businesses go bankrupt and rightfully so. Okay, so for example, if you come and save business, so certain times when you come and save businesses or save an entire industry, okay, you're like, you're pro that industry, but you're anti-capitalist because capitalism would have let that, that entire industry go bankrupt 
because it wasn't performing very well. So pro-business could sometimes be anti-capitalist. All right. Saying, Armin, isn't everything to do with perception? No. Four is bigger than two, and that's not based on perception. Can you say capitalist means being for free market? Um, depends. Okay, so um, depends on the brand of capitalism that you're supporting. Okay, I I defend a more regulated. So you have, uh, you know, lies of fair capitalism, which lets you, which has very limited regulation and makes the government's role be only defense and judicial system. That's like a very extreme form of capitalism. There's where no country has that form of capitalism. Okay. All, um, every, every country that has capitalism, the form of capitalism that they have right now is a regulated form of capitalism. And when you have regulated capitalism, um, that means the market is free mostly, but there are some limitations. The argument would be what should those, what those limitations should be. Okay. And so for example, I, I personally favor uh, the free market capitalism of Scandinavian countries, okay? A lot of people who don't understand what capitalism is think because they have a higher level of regulation, they're socialists, but they themselves admit that they're capitalist countries. They're just the regulations there are different from like a country like the United States, okay? So I want a higher level of regulation. So you want still free market, but more regulations, more limitations than a country, for example, the United States, but that is still capitalism. So a lot of people think like the Scandinavian countries are socialist because of their high socialism is not when the government does things. Socialism is not when the government has some level of high, higher levels of regulations. Okay. Socialism. Uh, these are, you know, if you have a free market, you have a capitalist market uh, economy. Oh yeah. Gaijin American is saying Republicans are crony capitalists. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Republicans are so. PK saying my biggest problem with Republicans is their zero policy for climate change, and more shocking, outright denial of it. Yeah, just that by itself, okay, makes the Republican Party the most dangerous party on the planet. On the planet, okay. So the the three greatest evils in this world are the BJP, the CCP, um, and the GOP the Republican party. Okay. And the fact that the GOP has is the, the richest one of them and the most influential one of them. And the fact that they have this policy of ignoring climate change makes that party the most threat to humanity among all parties right now. Uh, Ibn Kaim saying, but would you say that the U S is more capitalist than the Scandinavian countries? Um, more capitalist than Scandinavian. More capitalist than Scandinavian. Um, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. I would say that they have a different kind of capitalism. I don't know. I have to think about that because I was. I would say more free. Okay, so capitalism in uh, the capitalism has freedom of markets as an essential part of its definition okay but would does, does that mean that the more free the market is the more capitalist you are or do you say i have i guess it depends on your definition okay if the freer your market is you define if you see a capitalist market rather than a label you see it as a spectrum and you see that the more free you are, you are more capitalist. If that's how you're defining capitalism, okay, then sure, the freer your market is, the more capitalist you are, okay. But I think capitalism is a label, okay. Freedom is a spectrum. So I say that there are different brands of capitalism, and your brand has more freedom for the market, and their brand has less freedom for the market. If you want to look at it, because, because we don't have a word for capitalist. Like we don't say more capitalist, we say more free. You're more capitalist, like I'm less capitalist. That is not how you, I've seen economists talk about 
countries like oh you're you say you're you have your markets are more free you have less regulations that's how they talk so that's to me it seems like capitalist is a brand it's a label that you stick on a market okay it it's less of a, sp a spectrum but i guess you could go either way depends on you I, I don't see a problem with looking at it like that but the way i see it do you have like you know three or four brands of capitalism we don't have one that is um because if you are more um if you're more capitalist the freer you are then we don't have then by that definition we don't have any country in the world that is 100 capitalist like we don't have any truly capitalist country in the world so i don't see any utility with defining it like that i would say that there are different brands of capitalism some of them are good some of them are bad but yeah, I'd rather talk about how free the market is. Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter, link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today and we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week so make sure to subscribe link in the description below